And are you able in any more detail to give us the sequence of events of how it was that he owed money for the products? To my understanding, the way it was explained to me, because again, I was living in the house, so I had concerns about that. He was given an amount of product to spread throughout his deck for them to sell it. He was supposed to collect the money and turn it into someone. You said he was given some amount of the product or the drugs? Right. Do you know who gave it to him? I don't. And was it surprising to you when you heard that, that someone had given him drugs to distribute with his deck? At that point, no. Was that something that commonly went on? No, but it was something that I had just recently learned about. And I think when we were talking about money yesterday, you mentioned something called the box? Correct. Did the box have anything to do with Dreddy's violation? I don't know. Okay. But it was about money that he was supposed to be, yes sir, returning? He didn't do that? No. And so that was a problem? Yes. I want to stay on the box for a moment. Did you tell us yesterday the box is where the money goes from the dues and the other payments? Yes, sir. Once the money gets in the box, what is it used for? Well, part of the dues was sent to the state treasury. Other than that, they would use it if someone went to jail. They may use it to bond them out. If someone had a hardship in their household, they may help them get food or pay a bill. So, some of it, you said, is sent to the straight treasury. So, the box that we're talking about right now, would that box be on the regent level? Would that be on the county level or the city level? What size of a box are we talking about? It would go to the... If they sent it to the state, then it would go to the state. I don't know what size that was. I never worked in the treasury. But it was your understanding that there was some sort of multiple levels of the treasury? Yes. Do you know whether money ever went up even higher than the state level? Yes. There's a nation. There's also a nation level. Did you ever learn whether box money was either used for or came from drugs? I don't know. We looked at the tattoo on Izzy's forehead, and you told us that was the star of the group. Were there any other symbols or numbers or signs that had significance for the GDs? There are several. What are some of those? You don't have to tell us all, but the ones you remember. 74. What's 74? What's the significance of that? GD. G, the seventh letter of the alphabet? Right. D, the fourth letter of the alphabet? Correct. Did you actually tell us yesterday that one of these events was held on July 4th? Correct. 7-4? Right. You also mentioned yesterday the term GD business. Can you go into a little bit more depth about what you understood GD business to include? Anything that had to do with the organization, any type of business that they would conduct, whether that would be violations or maybe they had a legitimate business they ran together, or it could have been a series of things. Anything that was just handled within the organization. So you mentioned legitimate business. Correct. Was illegitimate business also part of that? Yes. Were drugs ever referred to as GD business? Yes. Is that something you heard a lot? Yeah. It was loosely used. So it was... That was something that I also heard it referred to as... Then we talked first thing this morning about a bunch of people you know in the group. I'm going to go over to the ELMO if we could have that, Miss Sewell. I'm going to show you part, Ms. Carter, of Government 474 in evidence, a framed photo. Let me hold it up for you first and ask, do you ever remember seeing this particular frame with these multiple photos in it? Does this look familiar to you? No. I'm going to put it up on the ELMO and ask you about one or two specific pictures in it. What about at the top left here? Have you seen this photo before? Yes. Do you recognize anyone in that photo? Yes. Who do you see in that? Myself. 
China. Is this you right here, kind of in the front toward the right? Yes, that's me. Who else do you see? KK. Where is KK in this photo? Standing next to me in the hoodie. Right here, in the white hoodie? Yes. Who else do you see? China. Where is China? Standing next to KK. Right here, in the denim jacket? Yes. Do you see anyone else you know? Is. Where is Is? Squatting down in front of KK. Right here with the jacket with the black sleeves? Yes. Anyone else you recognize there? Spot. Where is Spike? Squatting next to Is. Here with the chain with the star pinned on in the black hat? Yes. Anyone else you see? KC. Where is KC? He has his hand on China's shoulder. So, with the open black jacket standing next to China, in the middle? Yes. And I'm not sure we talked about KC yet, but who is KC? He was a regent. Regent? So, in charge of the size above account or deck? Correct. Anyone else you recognize here? Tech. Where is Tech? He has the shorts on. These big white shorts right here? Yes. Smiling with his eyes closed, it looks like? Yes. Who is Tech? Tech held different positions as well. He was a member. And we don't have to go one by one, but are there other people in the photo that you recognize? Yes, several. Are any of them people that we've already talked about here in your testimony? No. Are any of them people that had especially high or important positions in the group? Yes. Who was that? Junior. Where is Junior? Standing next to Ted. The taller guy in the black long sleeve t-shirt? Yes. What was Ted? A second coordinator. Anyone else worth pointing out? Silk. Where is Silk? Standing right behind KC with a hoodie on. It looks like it has got white letters on it. Sort of in the back with the hood on? Yes. And do you recall where and when this photo was taken, Ms. Carter? Yes. It was. I believe it was. I believe it was on GD Day again. There's a little date in the corner. It doesn't show the year, but 4 6, April 6. Would that sound about right for that event? Yes. Now, most of the people you talked about, including yourself, Ms. Carter, are standing right there in the front, in the middle. Why was the photo set up that way? We held POAs. So the more important people were toward the front? Yes. So when this photo was taken, did you have one of the more important POAs with the sisters? Yes. Do you remember which POA it was at that time? The second lady. The second lady right under China, the first lady? Yes. Now, Ms. Carter, we've talked a bit about drugs. We've talked a bit about beatings and physical violations. Did there come a time when you personally became active in any of the criminal aspects of this group? Yes. And what type of crime was it that you took part in? Bank transactions. Tell us how that started. I was living in a household with another sister, Ari, and it was just really bad. I wound up moving there because of security issues. They wanted me to be closer to the AO's count. And security issues. We're talking about GD security issues? Yes. And AO's count. You told us he was a coordinator, I think. Right. Go ahead. The conditions just were really bad. The sister that I was staying with, like, they didn't have plumbing. They had one room and it was her, her boyfriend, and two kids. It was just like mattresses. It was really, really bad conditions. And I just got to where I couldn't really deal with it too much anymore. There were kids there. 
And I had called China and I just told her, I got to get a job. I have to do something. I can't live like this. Why was China the person you went to when you had that trouble? She was my best friend. China and I were very close and I talked to her about everything. And she suggested to me that I call Iz and see if he could, like, let me work at the studio or, you know, see if he had any suggestions. I called Iz and he told me that I could come up to the studio, hand out flyers or help him there, and I would need to open a bank account. So the studio, is that the LTG studio? Yes. This was actually Iz's studio? Yes. From what you could see or tell about Iz, did Iz have more money at that time than you did? Yes. And so you were hoping you could work for him in some capacity? Yes. Tell us what happened when you went to meet with Iz. Iz told me I would need to open a bank account and that there would be money deposited into my account. Now, is that the type of work you were expecting when you went to see Iz? Well, he did. He told me that I would be able to hand out flyers like China suggested. So yeah, that is what I expected at the time. To hand out flyers or to open a bank account? Not to open a bank account, but he told me to open a bank account. And I didn't really see... I mean, normally that's common to open, have a bank account when you get paid for direct deposit. So, at that time, that's what I thought he was talking about. So, did you understand that the purpose of the bank account was to get paid for the work that you were going to do, or that the bank account was the actual work? Initially, that's what I thought. So, did you open the bank account? Yes, I did. Do you remember what bank you went to? Wells Fargo. I'm going to walk up, Ms. Carter, with the three-page document that's labeled Government 350 for identification. And I'll ask you whether you've seen this before and recognize it. Yes, I do. Is there a customer name that appears about two-thirds of the way down on that page? Yes. And what customer name is that? Denise Carter. And what's the top line, sort of the title of the document? Consumer application, account application. Is that the application you filled out when you went to Wells Fargo? Yes. Move to admit government 350. Admitted without objection. I'm going to take that back from you and bring it to the ELMO, Ms. Carter. So, Ms. Carter... Did you already have your own bank account prior to opening the Wells Fargo account? No. This was the first bank account you were going to have? Yes. How did you choose Wells Fargo as the bank to go to? He suggested Wells Fargo. Is did? Yes. Did he tell you why? At that time, he started to explain it to me. Yes. What do you mean he started to explain it to you? That there would be money deposited into my account and I would withdraw it. I would keep 15% and the rest would go to him. And did he say anything about passing out flyers at that time? No, that complete. He still wanted me to pass out flyers, but that didn't pertain to the money. And he told you Wells Fargo specifically? Yes. Did he say why? He said one of two banks, Bank of America or Wells Fargo. He didn't say why. He just said one of the two. So under new account information, I see it says Wells Fargo Opportunity Checking, Wells Fargo Opportunity Savings. Did you open both a checking and a savings account? Yes. And so under checking, savings, mailing information, that's your name? Yes. And the statement mailing address, is that where you were living at the time? Yes. The place in Cochrane? Yes. Let's go to the second page of that document. Where it says taxpayer identification number, is that your social security number? Yes, it is. And then where it says primary ID type, it says DLIC or DLIC. Did you have to show ID when you went to the bank? Yes, I did. Do you recall what kind of ID you showed? Driver's license. 
Home phone is a number ending in 0748. Was that your phone number at the time? I'm going to say yes because it's on there, but I had several phone numbers during that time, so I don't really remember it specifically. Why did you have several phone numbers during that time? It was routine to change our phone numbers often. Routine for you personally or routine for the group? For the group. What about this signature in the box there? Is that your signature? Yes. And when we look at the date next to the signature, July 28th of 2013, does that sound like roughly the same time frame when you started doing this for Is? Yes. So tell us what happened after you opened the account for Is. It was fairly quick. I got... I don't remember if it was a phone call or a text message. He told me to check my account, and I did. And it was like a little over $2,000, I think, in my account. And he told me to go get it and bring it up to him. So, Iz told you to check your account? Yes, sir. And when you checked it, you saw that something happened? Yes, there was money there. Had you given Iz any information about the account at that point? Yeah. I had to, yes, I had to give him my account number, online banking information. So, online banking information, is that like a username and password? Yes. So, Iz could log in and check your bank information? Yes. And so, he told you a specific time to go check the account. Did I hear that right? Yes. I'm going to walk up with two more exhibits, two more packets of documents, Ms. Carter, labeled for identification, Government 351 and Government 352. And you can just take a look at the front page of both of those documents and tell me if you recognize these ones. Okay. Yes. And those have your name on them too? Yes, sir. Are those Wells Fargo banking documents also? Yes. Move to admit Government 351 and 352. Admitted without objection. So, just putting up the very top of both documents here, Ms. Carter, am I reading it right that these are documents from the savings account and from the checking account that you opened? Yes, sir. Let's go through them one at a time. Tell us again this first deposit that you noticed. Do you remember roughly what the amount of that deposit was? I believe it was a little over $2,000. And when you looked at your bank information, was there any explanation or any line that told you where this deposit came from that you remember? To be honest, I didn't pay attention to where it came from. Or, if it did, I just don't really remember what it said. I can't recall. Did you care where it came from? Honestly, no. To have a couple thousand dollars suddenly appear in your bank account, how did you feel about that? I was relieved. I mean, we were in a bad situation, so the money was a relief, honestly. Now, I'm going to put up page 6 of Government 352, which is the checking statements. I need to zoom in. I see that the second line from the top, it's got a date of 724. Is this within about a month or so of the date from your signature on the account application, which was late June? Correct. And then, if we move it over, what's the amount of the deposit that we see there? $2,925.01. That's about the amount that you remember seeing deposited? Yes, sir. If we look at the description of that $2,900 deposit, I see that it says bank card MTOT deposit. Does that phrase sound at all familiar to you? No. We've got a whole bunch of numbers. And then I see the name Remedy Roofing Company. Have you ever heard of Remedy Roofing Company? No. Do you know whether Is had a business called Remedy Roofing Company? Not to my knowledge. Did you ever know Is to be involved in roofing at all? No. Or any kind of labor contracting? Not to my knowledge. Let me ask this. After getting that first deposit, did that wrap up your work with these bank accounts or did it continue? No, it continued. Were there more deposits? Yes. How often would these deposits happen? 
Sometimes it could be multiple times in a week or there may be a gap in between. So this Remedy Roofing deposit that we looked at was on 724. Is that right? Yes, sir. If we look maybe five or six lines down, I see another deposit for $2,630.35. Is that still consistent with the size of the deposits you were getting? Yes, sir. If we look at the date of that deposit, it's the very next day, isn't it? Yes, sir. And do we see again that name, Remedy Roofing, there? Yes, sir. Now, what, if anything, did you do after you saw these deposits in your account? I would go get the money. But first, I would go to the ATM and make a small withdrawal just to make sure that I could get the money out. And then I would go to the bank and get the money. Did you think of that yourself, or were you told to do that? No, I was told to do that. By whom? Is. And did he tell you what the purpose was of making that smaller withdrawal to confirm that you had access to the money? He said, just make sure you can pull the money out. Try the ATM first. Did you wonder why it was a possibility that you wouldn't be able to get the money? No. I knew, at this point, I knew that it was not legitimate and that something was not right. Now, if we continue with the statement, a few more lines down, I see a date of 726 and a description that says ATM withdrawal. So, 726, is that one day after the second remedy roofing deposit and two days after the first one? Yes, sir. And that description has an address included, does it not? Yes, sir. Read that address to us, please. 105 Shamrock Drive, Dublin. Is that near where you were staying at the time? Yeah, it was a city over. Is that a place that you would go make the ATM withdrawals? Sometimes. And then, moving over, you see the amount of that ATM withdrawal on Shamrock Drive. What's that amount? 300. Is that the size of the test withdrawal you would make from the ATM? Almost every time. The next line down still says 726, correct? Yes. And what is the description line for that transaction? Withdrawal made in a bank store. In a branch store? Yeah. Moving over then, what is the amount of that withdrawal? $2,527. Is that about the size of the withdrawal you would make when you went into the banks? Yes, sir. So that's a fair amount of cash now that you've got taken out of the bank. What would you do with that money, Miss Carter? I would take that money to Iz. Where would you take that money to him? Most of the time, I would go to the studio. Sometimes I would meet him at the flea market, at Spike's house very few times, or to his house. And as you were seeing these deposits and making these withdrawals and then bringing the money to Iz, were you in contact with him over the course of those activities? Yes. How would you be in contact with him? Through the phone. And so we're looking at transactions in the checking account, but let's also just take a look at the savings account statement, which is Government 351. Going to page 14, moving the calendar forward a little bit, but now we're in September, correct? Yes, sir. September 5th, September 6th. And looking at this transaction halfway through the list on September 5th, bank card processing, bank card deposit, a bunch of numbers, and then it says Kenny Roofing Company. Is that the same roofing company we saw on the other deposits? No. Is Kenny Roofing Company a business you had ever heard of before? No, sir. Now, when you brought the money to Iz, did you get compensated for your participation in any way? I did. How was that? I got 15% of whatever was taken to him. And would he just hand you the cash there on the spot, or was there some other way? No, he would give it to me there. So I can't remember if you told us already, but how often would these deposits come into your accounts? Sometimes almost every day, but then there would be gaps in between every now and then. 
And was it always roughly the same amounts that we looked at? For me, yes, it was. There may have been a couple or a few, maybe larger deposits, but on average, they were about that size. Now, these large ones, how large would that be? I can't really remember a specific number. I think I want to recall around 8,000, but I'm not sure if it was mine or someone else's. Do you remember ever whether there were deposits that were more than $10,000? I'm not sure if they were mine or not, but yes. And this is 2013, I think we said. This is some years that this was going on, correct? Correct. How long a time period did this continue for getting these regular deposits of thousands of dollars into your account? For me, just maybe a few months. Now, over the course of those few months, are you able to give an estimate of about how many deposits you received? No, I couldn't give you an honest estimate. If I go back to the ELMO for a moment, just kind of shooting down the list here, we got almost $3,000 on July 24th, correct? Correct. We've got, how much is this deposit? 2630 On the next day, July 25th, is that right? Yes. We got another 2800 on which date? The 26th. And here on July 29th, how much is that deposit? 5000 And then again on July 29th, we've got two over 2000 And then another 2500 that same day? Correct. And then on August 2nd, we've got over 3000 So over a couple of months at this pace, is it fair to say we're talking about a significant amount of money? Yes, sir. And all that is from this cash that you brought to IS? Yes. How did this activity of yours with your personal bank accounts come to an end? They refused to give me the money at one point. They froze. Who did? The bank. They froze my account. They told me that I needed to come in to speak with them to get the money. That it was approximately. I remember $4,000. And what happened after that? I didn't go. I know Iz asked me to give him all the information again just to verify it, and he was going to have China call and say she was me. They gave a phone number as well. All right, Miss Carter, what I would like to do now is play a couple of phone calls for you and ask you whether you recognize what's being talked about in those calls. And so to help you with that, I've got a book of transcripts here that I'm going to bring you up. Okay. And each of these pages has got a yellow sticker down in the bottom right corner with the number. So, I'll tell you the number. I'll give you a moment to turn to that number. We'll play the call, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Thank you. The first one I want to do is 722. So, Miss Carter, if you would turn to 722. And Miss Etienne, if you would queue up call number 722. Miss Carter, let us know when you're ready. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Miss Etienne, the call, please. Miss Carter, when they say when it drops, it drops, does that sound familiar at all to you? Yes, from your experience with bank accounts? Yes, sir. How so? That means the money's in the account. And would you ever get advance notice of when money was going to be dropping into the account? Not really advance notice. I would get... Sometimes Iz would tell me to be watching my account that money was supposed to be in there, but we really didn't know until we got there. What about the amounts or the numbers that are discussed towards the bottom of the page? It might be 8000 Sometimes it might be 30000 Are those amounts roughly consistent with the size of the deposits that you would see? I've seen deposits that size, but not for myself. So those are a little bigger than what you would usually personally see? Yes, sir. What about at the top of the second page, that statement that it's free money? Is that how you viewed this? Could you repeat that? I didn't hear you, sir. I'm sorry. One of the people on the call says, it's still free money. Did you kind of look at this as free money? I want to say free money as in that I didn't have to do anything for it. 
Like, I didn't have to work for it. But it definitely didn't feel like free money. Why didn't you feel that way? It was getting me out of a bad situation, but every time it felt wrong. Now, there's two people on this call. And is it fair to say that the man is explaining to the woman kind of how this whole process and scheme works? Yes. Is that Iz on the call who's saying how it works? No. Do you recognize the voice of the person explaining how it works? Yes. Whose voice is that? That was Spike. 